so I'm doing this video because I'm going to upload it, that's why it's on my iPad, because it'll probably take 12,000 hours. Um, I'm just, I don't know, the whole thing about me talking about things is to try and help others, but sometimes it doesn't help even myself talking about things. Well, sometimes it does, sometimes it's like really good for me to just talk about things and get things off my chest. Um, and it might help other people understand certain issues and problems and anxieties and depressions and stuff. And there's things I've never talked about on here because I've never felt strong enough to do it. Or, I don't know, but I've learned that to get past things or to try and get past things or get over things. I don't think you can ever fully get over things that have happened. But I think the best thing to do is to tell people things that have happened so they can maybe understand why you feel certain ways. Um, and I think because I don't know who's watching these, it's going to be easier for me to say what I'm going to say. And I've not decided what thing I'm going to talk about, so whatever I now discuss is news to me because I I didn't know which direction I was going to take this video. But I think... I just don't know which one to go with because I just think the best thing I can do because I, I have mentioned my ex is talk about my ex. <laughs> And it's my most recent ex, more recent than some people realise. Um, I met him two years ago. At the end of November, it was two years ago. Because I went to work somewhere and I met him. Didn't think anything of him. And I'm not going to go into all of this right now about what I thought about him or anything like that. But I met him and then over time he would start talking to me and coming up to me um, at the end of the night or especially when I went on my break because we'd have a 10 minute break and it'd be my only break of the night when we'd finish before we started cleaning up we'd have 10 minutes and he would always basically seek me out and I didn't see it at that, as that at the time but eventually it started to like look that way and feel that way and that's what it was and eventually we did end up in what I would have called a relationship but it may not have been that because of how it was but we were seeing each other and he basically was violent and not just violent it was sexual stuff as well and I didn't see it coming especially the first time it happened and I will never talk about the first time because that is the thing that affects me the most like I don't even want to think about it because that's the one I've never talked about ever with anyone like never but it was kind of like the start of everything but to me the worst and in some ways if I look about at it it was the worst violent wise like and he's done some pretty bad things violence wise but I think that one what he did with the violence was probably the most dangerous out of everything that he'd done um, but I don't want to talk about that one to be honest that's the one I will never ever tell anyone about So, basically, I say I don't even know what one to talk about. <sighs> God. So I've started it, so now I've got to like talk about one thing that he's done to me. 
I can't show you because I'm holding the iPad with my right hand. But on my right arm, on the underneath bit, like, like where my tattoo is, like where that big star is, but on my other arm, I've got a burn on the, because he burnt me with an iron. Um, and it was my fault because I was ironing and he just turned up at my house and things were said and he pushed the iron against my arm. Um, luckily not for a long time, it was like, I don't know, a second, two seconds. And I was screaming and he just pulled it away. Um, I don't even want to really talk about it. And now I started. Um, I still have the scar obviously. Um, I put um, bio oil on it every day. And I think because I've done it from day one. It's got it down quite a lot but whereas I've got other scars that I had longer they're not fading the way that's fading so I guess I've been lucky but when people spot it they do ask me what it is but it it's obviously part of a shape of an iron um, I think you know it, it's not the scar because obviously the scars going that affects me it's just I remember the pain I mean any if you've burnt yourself in any way whatsoever you you know what burning feels like it was just like I didn't expect it even though like I'd had like over a year of abuse by that point it was just unexpected and you know I really have my arms out it's very rare that I have my arms out but a couple of people have noticed it and questions have been asked about it and I said to someone, oh, I've accidentally burnt myself with an iron and they went, how could you burn yourself there with an iron? So I've just basically told the truth. I, I just thought, well, actually, this is the truth and told them it wasn't me. Because, you know, like, if, if you, like burn yourself with an iron I'd imagine you'd burn your fingers but I don't know how you could burn yourself like I just I don't know but when I said it to I think it's two people that's noticed or possibly a third I've just said well actually because when I the first time I said that I was just like I don't know why I'm covering but yeah I have that it's a reminder I guess But the thing is, with me, I've brought it on myself. I've protected him. And he's protected because he has friends in high places. But I just want to say to anyone else out there, whether you're male or female, that it's not acceptable for someone to do that to you. If, you know, you've not brought it on yourself, you know, don't let it carry on please speak to someone about it you don't have to go to the police because the police don't always help but you know speak to someone don't suffer in silence and don't let it continue because one day it might be a burn some a next day it might be a concussion the day after you know it could be a broken limb so please don't let it go on the way I have because he got away with what he did with me and now I've been told I can't ever talk about it again and because he's got friends in high places aka he's friends with the inspector he can do what he wants I can't tell anyone because as soon as that inspector finds out he finds out I've told them and it makes it worse for me so I have to live with that but don't do what I do if you report it you need to 100% give them everything you, they need but the police isn't always the best answer from experience. Sometimes just speaking to your doctor and your doctor will know better, really. Trust your doctor, unless your doctor's really dodgy, but I trust my doctor, so there are some really good doctors out there, and mine's really good with me. 
because I know I can be hard work and I know I frustrate her just because she can't see it from my point of view but you know but please don't suffer and please don't put up with anyone coming in your house and doing things like that I know I have and I do but that's just what the situation I've created I guess I'm I'm fully to blame and I will try and talk about other things I think because that was more of a recent thing it was it was easier for me to talk about but I don't know just please don't suffer and I'm gonna stop filming now because I've just seen how long I've been filming for but I know it's very well me telling you I'm depressed and I've got anxiety but you know it's only fair that I share some things as to why I feel this way and why I can't report it and why reporting it isn't the best thing for everyone I'm just so tired today I'm sorry I'm really really tired but I need to move and go to the shop I'm probably going to end up getting caught in traffic because I think I'm going to go slow